Hey everybody, I am Danny, otherwise known as the Grow Girl. Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited because in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you some tips and information on how to grow your own butterfly garden or just attract butterflies into your garden and your landscaping. So I love butterflies and attracting them is one of my favorite things to do. I just think they're so beautiful to watch and I love that they pollinate everything. So I'm gonna go through some general recommendations on how to build a butterfly garden, as well as show you what has worked great for me. And just remember, I am in the North Houston area, which is in zone 9A, so what might work best for me might be a little bit different depending on where you are and what kind of butterflies come through your area. As always, if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'd love to have you here every week with me. And if you want more day-to-day -day inspiration, be sure to check me out on Instagram at the Grow Girl Texas. Okay, so first I just wanted to give you guys some general recommendations for building a butterfly garden or being able to attract them to your yard. And then after that, I'm just gonna show you what has worked for me in my garden and just give some general recommendations on plants and flowers. So if I could give you one tip that has worked really well for me and should work really well for you is to choose uh, natural and local plants and flowers. So you wanna attract your local butterflies and you need to put out what they're used to seeing every day. If you're choosing natural local plants and flowers, then you're gonna be choosing varieties of things that grow well in your area, that are used to your climate and are attracting your local butterflies. So for instance, in the greater Houston area, we tend to have very kind of milder wet winters and very hot and dry summers. I mean, the temperature in the summer can get up to maybe like 110 degrees and it can also be really humid. So we wanna have uh, plants that are going to be able to withstand kind of the milder wet winters as well as the really hot and dry summers. So just thinking about your general area that you wanna set up or kind of your general garden space. So most of the plants and the flowers that are gonna attract butterflies are gonna require a lot of sun, so anywhere from six to eight hours. But you might wanna consider a shady area for the butterflies to cool off in. It's also nice to have some areas for them to rest that are not plants. So if you have some kind of rock border or you can just get uh, stones and just kind of lay them out throughout your yard or your garden and that provides a flat area for the butterflies to rest on and to soak up the sun. So like for instance in my backyard garden my space that I have specifically for my pollinators I've just got some big uh, river stones that I just kind of set around so that they have a space to land on. But in my front landscaping, we actually have a rock wall uh, lining our landscaping, so that has space for them to land on as well. It's also nice to provide a water source. So butterflies prefer to drink from very shallow pools that have a little bit of sand or gravel in them. That provides minerals into the water for them to ingest. So if you wanna get either like a really pretty um, staked feeder or you can just get a very shallow plate and just put like a very, very shallow pool of water with some sand or uh, pebbles in it and that can provide a source of water for them. And then the last thing, which is probably one of the most important things to remember is you don't wanna use any kind of herbicides or pesticides on this area of your garden or on these plants. You don't want to hurt the butterflies in trying to kill other pests. So that's important to remember. There's always gonna be some kind of natural organic way to get rid of a pest instead of using harmful chemicals that could hurt your plants as well as hurt your butterflies. A good example of this is aphids, tiny little super annoying bugs tend to really love milkweed, especially my milkweed. So uh, one of the easiest things is you can either just spray them with water and they will fall off. They'll come back, but you can keep doing that and that's not gonna hurt the plants, surely not gonna hurt the butterflies. You can mix together like a water and dish soap solution, kind of 50-50. Um, or you could actually release ladybugs into your garden. Ladybugs are a natural predator of aphids. They're a very helpful insect to have in your garden. So just adding them in, they will gobble all those aphids up. So those are all kind of natural ways to combat a pest. 
um, on a plant that's useful for your butterflies, but you're not going to hurt the butterfly. So that's important to remember. Okay, so when we're talking about plants to put in your butterfly garden or attract butterflies, there's kind of two main groups that you want to remember to include. Nectar plants, which are going to be flowers that are going to provide nectar for the adult butterflies to feed on. And then you also want to have host plants, which are going to provide food for the caterpillars. And some of them may overlap, some of them may be different, but you want to include both into your butterfly garden or your garden and maybe consider looking up some of the more common local butterflies you have in your area and what plants they really like. So in general, butterflies are attracted to red, orange, yellow, pink, and purple. So those are the colors that you wanna look for. Okay, so let's run through some different uh, nectar plants and I'm gonna show you some pictures and point out some ones that have worked really well for me and my garden. Okay, so azalea bushes are really useful. Let me show you a picture of mine. Butterfly weed, bee balm, button bush, butterfly bush, coral honeysuckle, phlox, gay feather, lantana, aster, zinnias, Pinta, salvia, yarrow, sage, purple coneflower, and any other native wildflowers. So I have found that the best nectar plants for my garden in Houston, the butterflies seem to thoroughly love the lantanas, and the lantanas are super drought and heat resistant, so they did wonderful over the summer. With um, a couple of the frosts we've had in the winter, they've died back a little bit, but they grow back super easy. So I love lantanas for landscaping. Bees also especially like them. So this is a great selection for your garden. One of the other big plants that the butterflies seem to love around here are the pentas. And I think that they're so pretty, especially like the very vibrant pink and purple ones. I have them in my front landscaping as well as my back butterfly garden and they just love them and the bees also love them. Okay, let me list for you some really good uh, host plants for caterpillars. You have dill, parsley, fennel, shrimp plant, passion vine, milkweed. Probably the best um, uh, host plant that I have had in my garden have been uh, the milkweeds. I've had several varieties and they've done really well here and I've had some monarch caterpillars feasting on them, which is always fun to see. Okay, I wanted to give you guys some really quick tips on attracting monarch butterflies if you live in the Texas uh, area or maybe California area or kind of anywhere between the north part of the U.S. and uh, Mexico. So especially in Texas, this is a huge area where monarch butterflies migrate through. So in the winter um, or in the fall, they make their way from the southern part of the U.S. down through the central area down to Mexico where they overwinter. And it used to be, you know, millions and millions of these beautiful butterflies would make their way through, but in the past 30 years, their numbers have dwindled. Almost 90% of the numbers of monarch butterflies have gone away. And some of the reasons for this are just the overuse of a lot of different pesticides, habitat loss, climate change, and loss of their native milkweeds. So one of the best things you can do is to plant milkweed in your garden. So monarch butterfly larvae or caterpillars, they only feed on milkweed. So if you do not have this in your garden, you're probably not gonna see a lot of monarch, monarchs visiting, but if you're providing um, host plants for the caterpillars, then they're gonna come visit your garden and raise their babies and have them travel onward, which is always really fun to see. There's a lot of different varieties of milkweed you can get, and they're kind of recommended into general areas of the U.S., so like West Coast, Northeast Coast, Southwest, Southeast areas. So I'm going to list you through some of the best varieties for Texas and the Houston area, but if you don't live here, just be sure to look up what are some of the best varieties for your area. And just a general note, one big uh, variety of milkweed that you're going to see in a lot of the stores that is not native to the U.S. is tropical milkweed. I mean, it's really pretty. The flowers are very vibrant yellow, orange, and red. 
Um, it grows really easily here, but the negative of the tropical milkweed is it doesn't naturally die back in the winter. And you would think, oh, this is wonderful, a, you know, a flowering plant that's going to bloom all winter, especially down here in Texas in our milder winters. But the negative is that because it doesn't die back, the butterflies are attracted to it here and they stop their migration. They don't continue down to Mexico. And really any of our winters here are too harsh for them. We need them to keep going south. So I would recommend either not choosing tropical milkweed or if you are gonna choose it for your garden in the winter, probably around like November-ish, um, cut it back to a couple inches off your bed. Um, that way the monarch butterflies will not stop for it. They will continue down south, but of course the following spring, it'll come right back and it'll provide nectar for them and other, other butterflies throughout the year. Okay, real quick, some best varieties of milkweed for the Houston area and kind of general south, southwest area, especially in Texas. So first thing you have a uh, giant milkweed, you have butterfly weed, aquatic milkweed, world milkweed, swamp milkweed, pine woods milkweed, and white milkweed. And then just a quick note on milkweed. So the sap can be very irritating, especially if you get it in the eyes. My husband is an ER physician and he actually had a patient come in one time that had a really bad eye infection and irritation from handling milkweed. So whenever you're planting, you're cutting, you're doing anything with your milkweed, wear gloves and then just wash your hands afterwards being careful not to mess with your face or your eyes. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you kind of some video and pictures of some of the butterflies that have been around in my garden, hopefully give you some inspiration. this was some great information and I hope it motivated you to build your own butterfly garden. I'll see you next time.